Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I had to redo this video because of how poor the quality was before. Um, but hopefully it's a little bit more structured this time. Um, I'm just running through the um, static site generator uh, Hexo, um, which I believe to be a possible Word, um, WordPress killer, um, especially in the blogging space. Um, however, I will point out that it does require a little bit more of a technical background, um, but that shouldn't be too big a problem for most of uh, um, most people out there, um, especially junior developers. Um, I find it's a it's a really good um, base plate to kind of build your website um, knowledge on, um, especially if you're going to be working in web development. Um, it's a really good place to start. Um, so without talking about it too much, um, I'll get into a demonstration of. Um, Pretty much how to set it up, um, and it's a pretty quick um, setup. Um, the The main thing about it is that it just doesn't run any databases to store content in, um, which I personally like a lot more. Um, that just means that you don't have to wait for a database to wake up and then serve you content um, and then render the content. It's just the content just comes from a, a, a markdown file, um, which then gets interpreted by the Hexo um, framework, and Hexo basically just runs a Node.js um, application. So, um, let's just get into um, how to install it. Um, I've already installed the actual npm package, um, so all you got to do is in your terminal or PowerShell or command line, after you've installed Node.js, um, install npm, and then you can um, obviously install the Hexo command line tool. Um, Alright, so I'll just be going from this step here, um, actually initializing the blog. Um, so, here we go. Um, so, as that kind of sets up, it uh, shouldn't take too long. Um, so this is just going to install a, a basically a vanilla copy, which you can pretty much get started blogging on straight away, um, which is quite good. Um, so, let's have a look. Um, the other things I will talk about is um, being a WordPress killer that I believe it is. Um, it does have plugins and themes. Um, the plugins, especially for things like SEO and stuff like that, where you want like sitemaps, um, or like automatically created sitemaps. Um, there's even ones for like robots.txt files, um, which really you don't really need an automated um, plugin for that. But um, also things like canonicals. Um, like you got this auto canonical one, um, which is quite good because no one actually wants to be writing canonicals. Um, you got like search bars and stuff like that as well. Um, you do have these admin areas. I haven't actually used them, um, but on the vanilla install, um, it is basically just a directory um, with all your content. Um, but it's, uh, it's the next step. Um, so I'll see it into the actual blog. Clear this out, um, and then we'll just have to install the packages. Yep. So this is just installing all the uh, dependencies um, from package.json, um, which are all these here. Um, Hexo is open source, so there's a lot of support out there. Um, it does seem to be very popular in Asian oranges. Um, so I haven't really looked into the actual history of it, but. Um, So that should all be good to go. Uh, now we just have to start it, which just will be your Hexo server. Um, and we should be underway. Alright. So let's just start it on localhost port 4000. Um, just come over here in our browser. Alright. So this is basically the first kind of. Um, view you're going to have um, when you first install it. Um, this is a home page. Um, it uses a theme called landscape. You can obviously change it or make your own. Um, but this theme uses like archiving um, or archiving category um, kind of sections. Um, I think this is actually a date archive, but anyway. Um, so this just shows the first post that's actually done by um, Hexo. Uh, gives you the I guess a quick start of how to actually um, do things. Um, apart from that, you do 
have all these other archives. You can modify them yourself if you want. Um, but generally I like to remove these because um, I like to have a more of a custom homepage um, where it's not just your blogs, it's more about the actual website itself. Um, but I'll get into, move into what it actually looks like in the back end now. Um, there's no real back end, so it's just like pretty much just files. So we'll get into um, how to actually create a blog post. Um, and because previously we installed that command line um, interface, um, we can just do it straight from the command line. But basically all it is is a markdown file. Um, and then that uh, hexo just reads that file and pulls in any content. Um, and that will come straight in as you saw here. Um, so this, this is all in a markdown file and it just gets um, passed through um, by hexo. So um, to start a new blog post, all you gotta do is hexo and then the name of your new blog post. Um, so uh, so if we wanted to do like a test, um, that should create a new post. Um, and you can do the same thing for creating pages as well, but as most people will be using this as a blogging platform, um, this is probably what you'll be using it for most. Um, and, and you don't even need to use that command. It, it doesn't really do anything besides just create a new file with some um, default kind of values. Um, and this, as I said, is just markdown. So if I wanted to do, say, a, a list, um, I just uh, create my list in markdown and this is item one, um, and I'll, that should be good. So if I, uh, if we restart the server or start it up again, um, this blog post should come through as a test, um, called test. So give this a refresh. All right, so that's our most recent post, uh, which is test. Um, and as you can see, it's created a list. Um, so. Um, comparing this to WordPress, it's very similar to um, instead of using like a, a text editor like um, Gutenberg, uh, which then obviously goes on to save the content into a database, this just saves it as a markdown um, uh, file. Um, so you can pretty much um, edit this on the fly. Um, so currently the Hexo server is running. Um, I can add just a, a second item here. And as soon as the file change is made, um, and we request it again, Hexo will update that um, and bring it in like that. Um, so that's pretty much how easy it is to get started and especially for, uh, the reason I like this so much is because I feel it's really good for um, junior developers um, who are trying to get into blogging as a way of um, learning. Um, I do it all the time. I blog just to kind of um, reiterate a, um, a concept or something um, and you can very easily do um, like code sections like you can in a github um, pages and stuff like that so I guess this is kind of an alternative to it um, you probably could just get away with using github pages but um, I'd rather use this um, out of preference so if I want to do like create a variable um, called new bar and then just set it to a string So we'll just obviously pass that markdown and it'll pull it through like that. So it's really good for tutorials. Um, obviously this does come down to the theme, um, but you can create your own themes and just keep this type of styling um, for any type of uh, code blocks. But that's just a quick overview of that. Um, the next thing I'll talk about is the actual um, more to do with the configuration and the setup of, of um, Hexo, kind of similar to WordPress's, um, how they do their um, like admin or dashboard area. Um, so you just go to this config file. Um, so if I want to change the, the name of the site, I could change it to um, my new site, I guess. Um, description, I think this description only comes through for the home page or it comes through on every single page. Um, and then if you override it inside um, one of the text files, it would probably just update it to the overridden one. 
um, and it does pull through um, open graph um, so if you're, if you're sharing your blog posts on say uh, LinkedIn Facebook Twitter actually no, not Twitter um, it'll actually pull through that open graph data um, so if you have any featured images and stuff like that um, you can inside your actual file um, you can just go here and then just add um, I think it's called featured image or something like that and you just create that key pair value and then just link in your image as well um, so it's the source of it um, so I'm gonna save that and um, the other thing that I really like is you can change permalink structure it's not really a big thing but um, it's a personal preference of mine um, to change it to blog um, as I don't really have any categories set up at the moment I put categories there as well um, and what I kind of um, went through in the last video was um, that all these file changes um, in the configuration file don't actually get read until the server is restarted so it only reads it once on um, I guess build or boot or whatever you would like to call it um, so for the, all these changes to um, come through I would have to uh, pretty much just turn the server off and then just restart it um, so the kind of um, use case I find this would be good for would be storing um, this kind of um, project in github um, and at any time you use the github editor to like say for instance add a post um, or you just made a change somewhere within this um, it would cause you to make a commit and then say for instance in um, Heroku or something you can enable automatic deploys and then as soon as there is a, a push or a commit made to the um, to, to the um, to the repo it will go and rebuild um, the container the node.js container and then bring in those updates um, which I think is really cool um, so uh, we just updated the um, First off, the, the site name. So that's changed the site name here. And then if we also go into our um, blog that or our blog post, we'll see the permalink structure has been updated as well. So that's pretty much um, creating blog posts and stuff like that and editing the file. There's a lot more um, configurations here, um, but I won't really go into them. Uh, if, you, if you do wanna change the um, theme, you just have to change the actual name of the theme which is just the, the folder name, and you should be good to go. Um, but apart from that, um, get out of this, and we'll talk about the themes. So the theme basically is an EGS, um, they use like an EGS templating language. You can use other ones like, um, say for instance, uh, PugJS, which used to be Jade, um, that I like to use, but um, when I create new ones, um, in Hexo, I just stick to the EGS because um, I can kind of copy it from uh, this one here, um, just a bit easier. So pretty much what a, a theme looks like in this would be um, in the layouts folder, um, you've got your layout, which basically um, defines what every single page is kind of like based on. Um, so depending on the page, you might have a different kind of header um, or you might have just different content so as you can see with um, this theme, is it's the, the footer is exactly the same on every page and the header is exactly the same. Um, I think even the sidebars are the same um, from a home page. Yeah, so pretty much everything except this body content, um, it doesn't change. So um, that's pretty much how that works. And you, and you can change that. Uh, it's not a big deal to change it, um, how things work. Um, but if you want to change like how a post looks or something like that, um, you just come through the partials. I believe it is called, um, this one's using article, so you'd have to change any content within here. Um, and then that would just change the way that the, um, the, the post page um, is kind of rendered. So pretty much um, after that, the only other thing for a blog would be um, like SEO and a bit of web analytics. Um, this theme does actually come um, with support for Google Analytics. Um, personally, I like to use Google Tag Manager. So 
you just kind of update this file here. Um, well, actually, you wouldn't even have to touch this file. You just, if you just wanted to keep the, the basic Google Analytics um, code in here, you just go down to your config file. So there's another config file within your theme. Um, and basically, this just outlines a few theme configs. Um, so you might have noticed that um, there was a kind of a menu bar within the header. So we come back over here. Um, these actually are defined from the config file. So say if I want to add another one, I just add um, test and then just assign it a value of uh, test, I guess. And that should, um, we might have to update it, but no, there it is. Did I spell that wrong? Oh yeah, test, there you go. Just figure when you spell things right. Um, so yeah, um, obviously this doesn't actually exist, so you just take us to a 404 pretty much. Um, and this does, I believe, return proper 404s. So if we actually went here and did this and then uh, restarted, um, they actually return a proper 404. Some CMSs, they do like a, a redirect to a, uh, like a 302 redirect to a um, page that just says 404, which in Google's eyes is just like a, a soft 404. Um, that's really confusing for Google or if you're trying to find um, broken links on a page. So that's really good that this does something I guess it's pretty simple, but um, you'd be surprised the amount of CMSs that don't do that. Um, and the other kind of thing um, that I was going to talk about was the Google Analytics code. Um, so you just add your Google Analytics code right here without any adding any of the, um, uh, I guess, the embedded HTML um, that Google Analytics gives you. So it's pretty easy to set up, um, but if you want to use like Google Tag Manager, you just edit this file um, and change that um, to how you'd want it. But apart from that, um, this is where the theme actually pulls in that code. Um, so just there. And um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, there's a lot of things like SEO um, kind of things, um, like canonicals, um, setting up like a sitemap and stuff like that. Like this doesn't come with a sitemap. Um, however, there's a lot of plugins uh, that will automatically create one. Um, and if you wanted to say a robots.txt file, you could easily just create one. Um, you just go to uh, theme, you go, I think it's theme, sources, and then you just add a new file. And then uh, this is pretty much just like a example robots.txt. Uh, and this would get pretty much um, exactly the same um, thing as, say for instance, in WordPress. Um, obviously you'd have to add in your rules, but um, yeah, so it actually pulls in just uh, static files. I guess it's a static site, don't worry. But it just pulls in static files like that. Um, and you could do the same thing with um, like a sitemap. Um, you just have to use some type of service to create one. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you can have automatic ones through uh, plugins. Um, the other one that I, I like is um, auto canonicals. Um, I hate writing canonicals. They're quite annoying. Um, so as long as you define the actual proper site name um, and make sure this is like a HTTPS, um, your canonicals will come up um, and you should get indexed for the right content for the right pages. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, I will be doing another um, uh, video just outlining how everything kind of comes together with the plugins. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions, please feel to let me know. Um, but hopefully this quality is a lot better. Um, the microphone is quite good. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.